Today we will be going over the Dr. Martin's Adrian Tassel Loafer. I will be doing a full review, I'll be going over sizing, I'll be doing an on foot look, and then also talking about how to break them in. What up Flame Gang? It's your boy Baby Boy back at it again with another one. Thank you for joining me. As I mentioned today, I will be going into the Dr. Martin's Adrian Loafer. If at any point in this video you feel like you got some value from it, please drop a like. It goes a long way. If you're interested in style or sneakers or streetwear or anything like that, check me out and feel free to subscribe. If you want to join the Flame Gang, hit that subscribe button. I drop videos at least once a week about different things in style and fashion that I'm into. But without further ado, let's get right into this review. So starting off, what is the Adrian? The Adrian is Dr. Martin's take on the loafer. It is a tassel loafer and it is a silhouette from the 1970s. The general look of the Adrian is kind of mixing smart and durable. You have this classy polished Napa leather upper with a rugged Dr. Martin's airwear air cushioned outsole. These shoes retail for $130. I got them directly from the Doc Martin store. The colorway that I have here today is called the Arcadia and it's a cherry red Napa of leather as I mentioned it is polished so the, the shoe does come right out the box pretty shiny which is nice the reason I got this Arcadia leather or this cherry red leather once the shoe gets broken in the leather kind of comes out more and the, the leather the red in the leather really rubs off and, and it gives it a really cool look so I'm definitely excited to see that as I break these in so as I mentioned, this is a tassel loafer. So there's a lot of different kinds of loafers. You have the penny loafer, you have the hazel loafer, you have the lace loafer. These are all methods of securing the shoe. This is pretty much just the vamp. As far as the tassels themselves, they're really just for aesthetics. They, they don't really do much. You can't tighten them or loosen them or anything like that. There's also a fringe of leather on the top of the shoe. I think it gives it a really cool look, makes it kind of flashy. As I mentioned, the sole is the classic Doc Martens Airwear air cushioned rubber sole. This is made of an organic rubber that is oil and fat resistant. And I really like this specifically on the loafer because it gives it more of a platform vibe. I hate loafers when they are kind of thin to the ground or they have that weird like driving sole. I really like the thicker sole especially for the looks that I'm going to be using this for. The outsole really does have a great tread as well which I which I really like. So this shoe does have some functionality as well. It looks really nice with the leather but the tread is going to make it durable and actually wearable in different types of weather. As far as the comfort of the shoe, the soles of Doc Martens are really comfortable but the actual leather upper is it's uncomfortable. Right out the box it's going to be uncomfortable. This is because it is as I mentioned it's a genuine Napa leather it is a higher quality leather and it takes time to break it in one other note is this the leather is squeaky right out the box so the first five to ten wears it's gonna be a little squeaky as you're walking around just to note I am mostly a sneakerhead so this is a little bit outside of my comfort zone I did want to pick up a pair of loafers because I have been seeing trends moving in that direction and I wanted to try this trend out. I, I have lo had loafers in the past, but nothing like the Doc Martin loafer. And I think if I invest in these, if I go through the break-in period, I think they're gonna get really comfortable and go a very long way. So let's talk sizing. As far as the sizing go, I got a size 10 when I normally wear a size 10 and a half in any other sneaker. The one thing I will note is that I do wear a size 10 in Converse. So that's an easy way to cross-reference. If you, whatever size you wear in Converse, you can probably get in the Doc Martin. I will say that right on the website, it does say size a full size down. I would really recommend going to a retailer and trying these on, but if you're ordering online, your best bet is to go a half size, maybe a full size down, depending on your foot size. Again, I went a half size down for these and the shoe fits really well. As far as these on feet, I'm a big fan of jeans with the loafer. I think jeans look great and you pair it with a pair of nice white socks. I think that gives a really nice contrast and looks good. I really want to wear these with shorts as well and maybe no show socks or no socks. Sorry if that's a little grimy for you all, but I think these look great with shorts. That's why I really need to break them in so that I can rock them with a lower sock and not have to worry about that heel aspect. I also like these as a dressier option with maybe paired with some funkier socks. I think that could look good as well. I'm still working out the kinks and how I want to rock these shoes, but or these loafers, but I, I think there's a lot of different things we could do with them. And I'm really excited to dive into this realm of footwear. Okay, so let's talk about breaking these things in. So the method I'm gonna I'm going to be using is based on a video from Rose Anvil where he talks about breaking in a pair of Doc Martens. And he's breaking in the boots. If you guys want to check out that video, 
click right up here. I just really want to loosen up these shoes. So I'm going to show you guys what it looks like to break them in. I don't want to have to go through a hassle of a break-in period. A lot of people say you got to just wear them to break them in. I don't want to have to go through that. I'm going to have to wear these for two weeks straight to break them in. So I want them to be game ready whenever I need them to get a fit off. So let me show you guys what that looks like now. All right, guys, as I mentioned, there's a handful of supplies I think you're going to need to break these in properly. You're going to need a mink oil, and I got this from Jewel. Um, if you don't have a Jewel, Walmart carries this. Otherwise, you can get this on Amazon. Really basic thing most department stores will have. Next up, you're going to need a rag, or you could use paper towels. Um, that works too. And you're also going to need some kind of heat source. I'm going to be using this old blow dryer. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is a vintage blow dryer, but don't go too hot, though. You do not want to separate any of the glue or anything like that just we're heating up the shoe just to get it warm and the way we start this process is we're gonna hook up our heat source or heat gun I'm using a blow dryer and we're gonna warm these shoes up so I'm gonna show you what that looks like so now the, the point of warming the shoes up is that we're going to get the the leather a bit loosened the fibers of the leather are gonna be a bit more susceptible to absorb whatever we're putting onto it in this case the mink coil All right, so I've been at it with the hair dryer for about three minutes now. I can definitely tell that the shoes are a lot softer. The leather is a lot more pliable than it was prior to heating them up. So I think we're ready to go ahead and start applying the mink oil. Again, I'm gonna be using a rag, working the mink oil throughout the shoe, and hopefully getting it into those fibers to loosen the shoe up. Again, mink oil is, is it's kind of like a conditioner for leathers. Um, it just makes it softer, makes it a lot more pliable. And then, so I'm getting a good dollop of mink oil on there. Hopefully you all can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and start hitting the shoe with this mink oil. I'm gonna be quite generous with the mink oil as well. I really want it to soak in there and hopefully, you know, loosen these shoes up a bit. As you can see, the shoes are already looking really shiny. I can definitely tell this is moisturizing the leather a lot. Again, shout out to Rose Anvil for this method. I did leave the link. He was doing this on a pair of boots from Doc Martens, but I'm assuming the leather is somewhat similar. So I just finished up. That's about one coat. As you can see, they're looking a bit shinier. So I went ahead and did one layer of the mink oil. I did go on the inside as well. And honestly, the shoes are already feeling a lot more loose, a lot more just broken in. I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with the heat one more time and then go over the, with the mink oil one more time. After that, I mean, obviously you're just going to have to wear these. All right, guys, I just finished that second coat. Fully mink oiled the outside and the inside just on the leather parts. Try to avoid the insole. But honestly, they're already feeling a lot softer. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finish off one more time with the heat gun and then let these sit, kind of chill out. And then I'm gonna wear them periodically over the next week, kind of breaking them into my foot. But that's kind of how I went about breaking in Doc Martin loafers. I hope this was helpful. Let's take you back to end this video. One thing I did notice about using this make oil method is it does kind of take away from the polished look of the Adrian. Just checking them out right now. So if you are a fan of the polished look, on these you can definitely get polished and repolish them but that will affect the overall look that's pretty much it flame gang thanks for tuning in i appreciate you guys checking out my review hopefully you enjoyed that if you're thinking about the doc martens as a loafer i think it's a great choice as far as loafers go it's from a brand that you know makes really solid shoes it's got nice leather and a really solid outsole and aesthetically i think it looks great make sure you guys hit like and subscribe that's pretty much it it's been your boy baby boy and stay fresh out there peace